Hello, and welcome back to Zim Basics. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Basics, we're going to take a look at text on the canvas. And that's a little bit different because the canvas is an image. So it's not like HTML here where that's actual text. If you go to the canvas, such as opening up the, uh, the cat here, this is now Zim, and we can't, uh, I can roll over that text, but that's, that's called the label. It's a label on a button, and I can't select it. So this is an image. All this stuff is an image. Uh, there I'm swiping. So we do have a way that we can deal with that. Um, like I said, all of this is part of the picture. If we want selectable text, then we have to overlay a text area from, from HTML. And uh, we've gotten around that in some ways by providing a keyboard. So here's an example of a keyboard. So there's a label that we can't select, but we can go to different parts of it. And then let's see, a, there's a QWERTY keyboard and we can type in here. And so if we need to type into a text field, this is a label that we're adding letters to. So um, that's one way to do it. Or what we've done is, let's close this. Um, uh, what we've done is provided, and I'll scroll on back. It's it's new to Zimcat. Oh, there's some more text too that we're doing to allow. It's a thing called label letters instead of label. Uh, label, like I said, is that image. Label letters divides that up into each letter is an asset, and then we can make different colors or or bolds and emphasis and underline colors etc in um, or background colors in that case or even tag with a link we can um, adjust our canvas text or canvas label as if it were simple HTML I guess to add add those kinds of effects to our text uh, that <clears throat> that isn't done all that much. Like we're not we're not working with lots of text for articles and stuff like that for the most part. Uh, we may do for many years on the canvas without that ability, but lately we added it to label letters. So you can have a look at that if you so desire. Still, usually we would just make a label be this size, and then if we wanted it to change size, we make another label, and we make it that size, or that font, or that color. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, the other way to do input text, that's what I wanted to show you here. Another way to do input text is back here with the text editor class. So if I click on that, this is new to Zimcat as well. Uh, right here, this is uh, a, an HTML text area that's been overlaid inside of Zim, and Zim takes care of the scaling and, and moving of that. You can use your own text area at any time to get editable text, but it will always sit up on top of everything else, and sometimes that's annoying. If I were to drag a circle over this, this text couldn't, it couldn't go underneath the circle. Uh, so the way we would deal with that is we would convert that text to a label, put, make the circle go over it, and once the circle finishes going over it, bring it back to a text area if you, if you really wanted to. Or what we've done is we've made it easy, I hope, for you by providing a way that we can change. Change text with uh, text editor, like that. And as you can see here, we can adjust various things, like at the moment it's italic and bold, sizes, fonts, <coughs> excuse me. And that's the text editor, and so you can sort of arrange it like that as well, where when you, when you click on it, it opens up and you can make editing to it if you so desire. And that text editor is also customizable, so you don't have to provide different fonts or even this, you could just have a little box. Okay, so that's an introduction of some of the concepts of text. Once again, this text right here is not selectable because it's a Zim label. Let's go into some code now and code some basics together. <clears throat> We're in a Zim basics text file that I made. <laughs> I always forget that. 
just in case you missed the, the last Zim Basics, if we go out to the Zim framework, it's available under code here. It's available under code and it's right here. So that's the, the template. You hit copy and that copies your template right there. And then you can copy that into a text editor. All right, so to make text, it would be a new label, just like uh, label L A B E L, uh, just like any other display object that we show. A, a label is considered a component of the Zim display objects. It's the very first component that we show in the docs, as a matter of fact. Why don't we go take a peek? Mm, docs. So here's the docs. If I type in label, there it is. So here are the display objects. <coughs> Excuse me, there's our basic display objects that uh, most of these things are made from. Here are the custom sort of shapes or, or shapes like uh, circle, rectangle, triangle, poly, line, etc., squiggle, and blob. So those are some shapes. And then we start in components and labels the first one. We also have a few other things that relate to labels. Label on path. Guess what that is? Label on arc. Guess what that is? Label letters that we mentioned, and then we move into button. So the button itself has a label. And if you don't put, if you don't pass a Zim label into the button, then it will make a default label and use that. But you can customize anything to do with the label. Look at this text, size, font, color, roll color, shadow color, shadow blur, align. As a matter of fact, let's open this up. And there they all are there. So lots of parameters with label, which is why we made it so that we could pass into the button. If we wanted to, we could pass in a label so that we don't have to in the button. Imagine this, this is the button. The button also has tons of parameters. Well, if we had to add all of the label parameters to that as well, we'd be in trouble. Any of the components, when it deals with the label, the color parameter is the color of the label. And the roll color is the rollover color of the label. The background color is the, the background color of the component, like the button, for instance, and there's the roll background color. You can replace the label on something like a button with, um, with icons. So in here somewhere, I'm just looking for it, is icon and roll icon, but that won't automatically replace the label, just in case you want to put an icon that has, also has a label. Um, so you would set the label to quote, quote, and then, and then you could place in there an icon. Anyway, that's more uh, button stuff. This is the label. We'll leave our docs here on the label. And of course, you can go through and have a read over that. We'll leave it here on the label just in case we need it again. But let's uh, continue on coding our label. So the first thing is what text we want to say. Hello, world is a common hello word. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've ever done that. I did, I did a little feature with all my misspellings of hello world, like hello work, <laughs> hello uh, world. I don't know if I ever said hello word. That's not a bad one. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have the grumblies. I just had a lovely pizza sandwich. Yum, yum. That was good. So there it is. We've made a label and we've passed in what we want it to say. Uh, we won't see it until we put it on the stage. So we'll dot center that on the stage and the stage dot update. Let's have a look <coughs> in browser plus. There it is. Hello world. Once again, not selectable. Well, that's fine. For most of the time when we're making apps in Zim, we would, it would just be a label of something. It doesn't necessarily need to be selectable. As a matter of fact, it's preferred not to be selectable. I hate it when when people make buttons and the text on the buttons is selectable. That's, I, I call that bad interface. I don't want to be accidentally selecting the label of a button. So uh, the things we make quite often, if we had to set a default, we would set the default probably to not selectable. Anyway, if we do want to select, as mentioned, we can add a new text area like so. And we'll dot loc this <coughs> at 100 comma 100. Save that and refresh here. And there's this text area, which is overlaying. Like I said, it's overlaying some HTML text in there. 
and yet it still handles the scaling of it. It jostles a little bit, but so be it. That's the nature of the beast. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of the things that I mentioned before is if we had a new circle like this and we dot, uh, well, whatever, dot, okay, well, dot center it just because uh, it won't be there for long, and then dot drag. But watch what happens. So we refresh here. If I type some text in there, there's the text. And I pick up this, the circle. Huh. And there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, because this text is an HTML overlay on on the on the canvas. It's overlaid to be there. Uh, as mentioned, you can possibly swap this for a label. And by the way, the text area is you you can set some initial text that would be in there. You might have to set a property to do that. I can't remember. Like text area dot text is equal to, and you can put a a default beginning text though, so that when they select it, it that default uh, is called the placeholder text, HTML, play. it's an HTML text. So anything you could do with HTML, you can style that, blah, blah, blah. You can, you can put that in, in, in there. All right, and you can also add and remove the text area as well. And Zim will take care of making sure that that gets, um, that the, the, HTML tag also gets removed. If you want to refer to the tag that's in there, it's the text area dot tag. That's that would refer you to your HTML tag. And there's ways to turn on and off spelling, uh, all that kind of stuff. So see the text area. This isn't really uh, this this basics isn't about the text area, but that's for input text. Okay, so I'm getting rid of that, and we're continuing on talking about the label. So let's have a look at that again. There it is, hello world. The next parameter is your font size. So 50, and it will be bigger. Uh, how about 150? We'll really get in here and have a look. Well, okay, too much of a look. <laughs> 100, there we go. Okay, so there's a hello world. The next parameter is the font. So we could go to courier. Uh, as a matter of fact, in the last uh, basics, I believe we looked at different types of fonts. So there's hello world done in courier font, or if you don't want to specify a font, the default here is, oh, I can't remember, it's either Verdana or Arial or something very, very traditional, um, the hello world. But we looked at fonts, you can load in custom fonts, see the last Zim basics to see how to do that. When we were talking about loading in assets, fonts was one of the types of assets that we looked at. And although, come to think of it, I think we had two, two basics on assets and the second, uh, the second basics was on sprites and fonts because we didn't get to fonts in the first one, if I remember correctly. So if you see one called sprites, hopefully it says fonts in front of it. Um, it's the fonts one that you want there. And the next one after that is the color. So here's red. That's red. There's also outlines. There's roll colors and um, other other thing. All those other parameters as well. Uh, what else? If you want to change it, you can change it. For instance, we're going to do a timeout. Oh, we have. I don't know if I've shown you timeouts in the Zim Basics yet, but we're going to do. The plan is, I want to look at animation in the next um, in the next Basics. No, not animation. My apologies. Uh, what was it? Hit tests. I want to look at hit tests in the next one, but at some point we should probably look at um, timing of things. We could do that right now. You want to do it right now? As I look at the time, I want to see how far, and we're 15 minutes in. There's really not too much more I want to show you. I want to show you how to change the text. Yeah, why don't we uh, combine this one, this is in basics, with um, some timing as well, and that will that will be fun. So a timeout is like the JavaScript timeout, which is set timeout like that. I always get confused when I do the JavaScript timeout because you do the uppercase T and I can never remember if I have to do the uppercase O. But anyway, uh, set timeout, what you do is you call a function. So I'll put an arrow function and then you have to remember to put how long and it's in milliseconds. So this would be call this arrow function in one second. Well, 
we didn't like the fact that you put the function first and then the something else. Because everything else we do, frame.on, we put the something first and then the function. <laughs> so we switched it. Yay! So we put the, uh, the, the time first and we're in seconds. So after one second, call this arrow function. And this is very much like a loop. When we do looping, loop, we say, hey, loop 10 times and then call this arrow function. So all of the things we're doing has a little bit of extra information, such as the um, circle. I don't know if I have a circle dot on. Click, call this arrow function. See what I mean? This, then the function, this, then the function. So we made our timeouts like that too, because half the time, I swear, half the time I'm so busy wanting to make my function, I forget to add the time because it's after I've made this, you know, this long function sits in here. So anyway, boo for JavaScript for that. I guess their, their thoughts about it was that the time is optional on a timeout. <laughs> it's like, yeah, not once ever in my whole coding career have I made a timeout without a time. So, you know, geez. Anyway, so um, there you go. Get rid of these two. Boop. All right, so we have a timeout after one second. And remember that Zimcat and beyond is, uh, is in seconds. You can convert back to milliseconds if you want. Uh, see the time constant in the docs. I think it's just time, all capitals, time, all capital letters equals milliseconds, quotes. Um, but anyway, it, 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 you'll probably get used to using seconds in no, <laughs> in no time. So after one second, we're going to change the text of our label. But to do that, we have to store our label in a, a variable const. Label is equal to. And then here, we will say label uh, dot text. So it's a text property is equal to, wow. Wow, hiccup. <laughs> I don't know if you heard the hiccup. I don't know how to spell a hiccup. It's probably not that, but I do like that. This is like a really bad hiccup. Um, so we do that, and we also need a stage.update in there. So we'll copy this stage.update and a semicolon at the end. Got it? So timeout, we call this function, and here we go. We save it, we refresh. Hello world. Wow, hiccup. Hmm, not centered anymore though but that makes sense doesn't it so by default the label is left aligned so if we don't want left alignment uh, but rather center alignment then we start uh, we have to go a fair bit down the parameter chain so what i'm going to do is put squiggly brackets in there and we'll take this stuff and put it up in top inside there that's not all you have to do you have to say what these things are this is the text of the label this is the size of the label. Hey, we don't have to worry about the font now. This is the color of the label. And then this is the align of the label center. All right, let's try her again. Hello world. Wow, hiccup. Okay, there you go. So, hello world. Wow, hiccup. Uh, the text has changed. Uh, you can also change the color of it at this point or the or even the font and other things like that uh, as properties. You can animate a label too, obviously. Um, you, if you wanna animate each letter though, then you need to go to label letters, which isn't exactly Zim Basics, but it almost looks the same. Label let, letters, I think we have to pass it the label there, and I don't know what, what exactly will happen. There it is. That's a hello world. It looks like it didn't take our size. What uh, I remember now. We can just take this label and pass the whole label as it is into label letters. And then it would look just like our label. Uh, save this. It would look just like our label here, but all of the, the letters would be divided up into individual letters at which time you can then animate those. Let's, let me show you an example of animation. I'm not gonna do it with you, I don't think, but uh, we'll find it here. So I'm gonna close label and look at label letters right there. And there probably is an example. <laughs> Darn, <laughs> what do you know? There's no example. Hmm, okay. All right, let's see if I can find them. So back on Zim. 
under examples, I guess, collections. Uh, we launched that in Zoom 10, so it's probably in here somewhere. Label letters. It was at the same time. Oh, you'd never be able to find this. It was at the same time as this, this thing. There it goes. There it goes some and radial. Okay, so radial. Well, the reason why we did label letters was to start being able to make these types of things where we. Uh, I can't remember to get into all these. Oh, there we go. Emotions. You see how each of these things. Oh, that was on path. But when we when we made it work on a path and an arc we needed to divide up the, the letters and we said, oh, well, it would be handy to have la label letters. So there's, uh, this is the sort of the launching of label letters back, back at the time. Let me refresh this again. And you see we're animating in each letter there. And we'll try it again. We're animating uh, kind of double up and down like that. And we animate in each letters. Cool, huh? We should probably add that to the docs as a sample link, but just in case you ever come and find this code, I'll add it right in here. And this is uh, label letters example. Okay. So uh, more about time though, what if you wanted to say some words like uh, say put them in a little speech bubble and have the words change every half a second or every second or something in that case you wouldn't use a timeout that would be instead interval which is this very similar to set interval so interval runs this thing over and over again every one second so I'm going to comment out the timeout, and we'll do this with an interval. Uh, we might want to make an array. So const words is equal to, and we'll make an array of things that we're going to say, starting with this as the first one. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then, oh my goodness. OK. So there we have three things that we want to say. Wow, hiccup, yeah, oh my goodness. Oh, uh, what's the first thing that it says? I can't remember. Doesn't it say something to start? Does it really say wow, hiccup to start? I thought the label said something. Where is it? Ah, oh, there it is. It says hello world. So this really is the very first thing that it says. Hello world. And we'll have to sort of figure out what we want to do there. Um, what I was thinking is, as we do the interval, we could just cycle through them. Play this one, this one, this one, this one, and then go back to the beginning. But uh, we run into a little bit of problem. If, it, if it's already saying hello world, and then we make the interval do the first thing in the list, then the interval is going to say hello world again. Uh, so, I don't know, we could probably fool the system by putting it at the end. Um, there's, there's another option too, but let's just, this, this will keep it simple for now. Uh, and then we'll take a look at that other option if we have time. So here's now an interval, but for the label.text, I'm not going to just automatically say that one. I'm going to base it, uh, the first time it's going to do this one, then this one, then this one. All right. So we could do that with raw code by keeping track of a count of some sort. So we could say uh, let count equal zero. As a matter of fact, I suppose we could increase the count before we use it, and that way we could have put the hello world at the beginning. That, that, that would be another one. Anyway, uh, and then inside here we can increase the count, count plus plus, uh, but we would we would want to use it the zero one first. So here, instead of saying this, we would say words at count plus plus like that. Yeah. So this is a post assignment operator, which means um, the very first thing it does when it evaluates this the first time, it will still be zero, and then after it's evaluated, it will increase it. So that means we're going to get words at zero first and assign it to the text in update. All right, so that would be one way to do it with the count. Let's see if it works. We're gonna run into a problem eventually. Hello world, 
Wow, hiccups. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Hello world. Undefined. Undefined. There's the, there's the, eventually has just hit. So the count is increasing and it went longer than the length of the list. So we're in trouble. Uh, the way to get around that is with the modulus. But I want to show you, I don't even want to use a count because that, that's kind of given to us in interval. Something that the Zim interval has is whenever we call that function, we get past an interval object. I usually call that OBJ. It's sort of like in events, when we receive an event, we often collect the event object E, at which point we just would do that. Um, but here, in the interval, or in a timeout, we get past an interval object, obj. And that interval object, obj, already has a count, obj dot count. Now, the count will tell us how many intervals have gone by. So, the very first, inter first time it runs, it will already be one, because one interval has gone by. We have the choice on interval, which actually would be handy because that means we could take the hello world and put it back at the beginning because it will skip the zero element at the moment because um, the count of the interval is one the very first time. All right, so the other option though would be to say, and we don't want to do this option, is the next parameter of interval, I believe is, it's either do you want to start right away or um, how many times do you want to run? I'm going to have to look at the docs. I can't quite remember. So I'll look at the docs under interval, that pull up interval. So the time of the interval, what function to call, the total number of times, and do we want to start right away? So you can say only run this interval five times, and then it'll only go five times. And do you want to start right away? If you start right away, so this would be null because we still want to go forever. You know, if, if we did, we could actually say the length of words, probably. But um, uh, if we want to start right away, we would say true, in which case the object's count as to how many intervals have gone by would be zero the first time. Then once one interval passes, it would be one. So that that's a little bit tricky, but anyway, it's not it's not the end of the world. There's I, I would call it a feature, like it's a good feature. Uh, we can, because this will be one to start, we can bring the hello world, and this will be handy as we'll see later, we can bring that hello world into the start of it like that, and let's watch what happens. We're still going to run into the, the pr same problem as we had before. Hello world, wow hiccup, yeah, oh my goodness, undefined. Because uh, as the count went past the length, it's undefined. Uh, but that's easy to solve. We use a modulus, it's called. It's a special thing called uh, a modulus, and it would be the words dot length. Like that. So what a modulus is, is it's uh, you divide it, and then you take the remainder. It returns the remainder. So as this, once the count gets longer than the length of the array, it will sort of, the remainder will be the very first time when it's equal the length, it will be zero, the remainder, therefore it'll go back to zero. When it's one longer than the length of the array, it will be one, and so it'll start counting all over again. So in other words, this goes zero, one, or, well, it goes actually one, two, three, one, one, two, three, and then uh, when, when it's three, um, that's great, it'll be three, but when it hits four, that will be the length of the array, and it'll go back to zero. So the fourth one will be here. So it'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, etc. So it'll keep on looping. And ladies and gentlemen, da, 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 wow, hiccup, yeah. Oh my goodness, hello world, wow, hiccup, yeah. Oh my goodness, hello world, wow. Now, um, Another thing that's kind of interesting is that if I were reading this, I, I almost can't read wow hiccup or oh my goodness because it's going too fast for those ones. But the word yeah, I'm stuck on. Yeah, waiting, you know, I'm waiting. Uh, so if we wanted to adjust the length of this interval, 
If you were using raw JavaScript, you'd be out of luck. You'd have to use a timeout, and then each in the timeout, you'd have to decide how long the next timeout would happen, and you'd end up with a function that calls itself. And that could be kind of twisty. Um, anyway, I'm kind of assuming that you already know some JavaScript and know about these things. Um, and, and this is Zim Basic, so we're learning about how to code on the canvas. However, some of you might be coming in without, um, without much JavaScript uh, uh, experience as well. So who knows? Like, so I may have gone through the modulus kind of quick for you. Sorry about that, but I, I'm sort of assuming that you already know how to use that. All right, now watch this though. This is really cool. This value right here can be a Zim V value, it, it, a parameter that is dynamic. That means uh, we can make a change. Each time it gets called, we can make a change. For instance, if we put it in a random, if we put in random three, well, how about one, three, six, or something like that, what it will do is it will randomly pick Every time it runs, it randomly picks one of these. So that would be great if we were dropping flowers from the sky. When you drop flowers from the sky, you don't want them to be every second. Oh, look at these lovely flowers fall every second. So uh, if you were playing a catching game, for instance, this would be perfect. As a matter of fact, you, we, you probably wouldn't even specify them like that, although let's, let's try it. I'll show you the option in just a second. So now, these will go at different speeds. Sometimes we're waiting longer, that's waiting quite long. And sometimes we might be waiting shorter. <laughs> One second, three seconds, or six seconds. It looks like we've had two six seconds in a row, <laughs> which isn't greatest. That was probably a three second, that was a one second. So you see what I mean? They're all now randomly going. Uh, the other way that you would do that is min. So uh, if I can spell min min of one second and a max of five seconds or something like that. This is also a Zim V value. Now Zim will pick within that range and that would be great for falling flowers. <laughs> I used to use bombs, but you know, I'm a peaceful person. <laughs> so now we have falling flowers, all right? But you can also do a series is another of the Zim V values formats is a series. So we could make it, let's let's have a look at these words we've got here. We've got a hello world. Why don't we make hello world be a minute? <laughs> a minute, a second, I mean. Wow hiccups can be two seconds. Yeah can be 0.5 seconds. And what's the last one here? Oh my goodness, what do you think? Uh, 1.5 seconds. There we go. So now we have a series that looks like this although it's a bit tricky. The first time it's going to be one second, so it's going to wait one second while it reads us. Okay, I think that's right. Alrighty, let's run it. Uh, we refresh here. Well, that didn't look too good. <laughs> Hello world, wow hiccup. Yeah, good, yeah, it's just the yeah is quite short. But what do we do when we refresh this? Hello world, oh, there it is, that's fine. Wow hiccup is longer, yeah is too short. Okay, so we still want probably, well, I don't know, 0.8 seconds maybe on that. And we refresh, hello world, wow, hiccup. Yeah, oh my goodness. Okay, 0.9 on the yeah, and two is too long, 1.5, and let's try it. So I'm tuning it here, hello world, wow, hiccup. Yeah, oh my goodness, hello world, wow, hiccup. I think hello world's even too short, isn't it? Let's go 1.5, 1.8, you could all, almost proportion it to the length of the letters. As a matter of fact, if you wanted to, you could proportion it to the length of the letters. You could give each letter like 0.1 second or something like that, maybe a bit longer, 0.3 seconds. Because the other type of um, value that can go here, the other type of ZimV value, is a function. So we could call a function, and the function could keep count and count the letters, and then return a time that is based on the number of letters like that. Isn't that amazing? So another of the ZimV values is a function can go in there. So uh, great, we talked a bit about ZimV values. We've talked about an interval. You can clear an interval if you want. Um, we wouldn't want to, but I suppose we could say if uh, before we we put in the parameter of you know how a uh, count here we used to do it this way if obj dot count 
is greater than or equal to, I'll just put an equal to, anyway, I'm conditioned to do that though, greater than or equal to obj dot uh, total, I think it is, like that. Then you could say obj dot clear. All right, let's see where that stops us. I'm not sure, it may, we might have to be greater than the total minus one. So we save that up. Hello world, wow hiccup. <laughs> okay, that doesn't look too good. It's cleared it already. We've got one more to read. So yeah, if it's greater than the obj.total. Yeah, oh, because right, the count started at one and the total is, is total. And usually count started at zero, but not in this case. Did I save that? Is it still broken? Hello world. Wow, hiccup. And we cleared it. If obj.count is greater than the object total. Well, let's see what the object total is. Zog obj dot total. And how about the obj dot count? obj dot count, comma. So a zog like this, and if we want, we can put a color there, green. A zog like that can um, accept any number of parameters. And we'll go into here, have a look. One and minus one. So the total is minus one. Where, where did it get a minus one from? <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, obj dot, uh, huh. Oh, there is no total. We didn't uh, say the total number of times. <laughs> right, of course. Yeah, uh, that is perfectly correct. The interval, its total is minus one because we di it didn't have a total. So that means it's gonna go forever. Um, if the interval had a total, then we could do it. We could do it that way. We could stop it. Well, it would stop because it's got a total. Uh, we want the words dot length. So instead, this should be words dot length. So that's uh, what and we won't even bother zogging. So if the count is greater than I think or equal to the words dot length, let's clear our object and we try this out. Let me still be off by one. Hello world. Wow hiccup. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Hello world. Yeah, we're off by one. So it, it's now stopped at hello world. So if it is greater than or equal to like minus one. Okay, let me check it out. Ready? Hello world. Wow, hiccup. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Cleared. So that's what I wanted to show you is that the uh, the interval can be cleared like that. What if we wanted to clear it, like if we clicked on something, for instance, if we click on the stage? Well, that would be stage dot on stage mouse. This is a weird one. Stage mouse down stage mouse or sorry, just mouse down is you'd have to mouse down on something that is on the stage. Then it would do it. But stage dot on stage mouse down is actually going to call this arrow function when um, we press on the stage anywhere. And at that point, we can't say obj.clear. It's not very, uh, I mean, we could arrange it so that that happens. We could store, or we could declare a variable out here and put the object into that variable and then use the variable on the outside because of scope. We can't use obj because obj is only available inside this interval function here. It's not available outside. So anyway, we wouldn't we wouldn't clear it that way. I'm going to take away that clear right there. And, and by the way, just to finish that off, though, we don't need to do that. We could have just passed in um, null for. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I think this is the total right here. First parameter is the total. And let me just check that, though. <laughs> I still can't remember. Yeah, uh, the first parameter after the call is the total and then immediate. So. Um, this would be words dot length, I think. Okay, and I believe that would do the same thing. Why don't we check that out? So you see what we've done? We put the total of the, the words dot length in there. And when we refresh here, we get hello world. Wow, hiccup. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Hello world. <laughs> Minus one. <laughs> and refresh. Hello world. Wow, hiccup. Yeah, oh my goodness, period, it ended. So that means 
uh, it was already on the first one. That's why for it has to go the length minus one. It's already on the first one. So uh, only go three more times, basically. One, two, three, and stop. So that would have worked. In other words, no need to do that. But uh, it's sometimes handy to be able to clear your interval when you're inside the loop. If you check on something and something else has happened, like a timer is finished or something, then you could clear. Uh, or, or you would do it that way. Um, but what I want to show you now is how to clear the interval if we've pressed on the stage. And already mentioned, we don't have access to the object. So instead, we store it in here. We go var inter is equal to. So just assign the return value of the interval to a variable and then use that inter.clear. All right, and this will then stop the interval from proceeding. Right now, it's going to loop. Let's let's have a look a look at the loop. It's going to loop because we took a, we took away the closing of the loop stuff. So here it is looping again. Hello world. See, it's going, and I'm going to click on the stage any minute. Yeah, I click on the stage, and now it's stopped. It. Oh my goodness, because we cleared it. There's also a pause to the interval. I've been talking a lot. You can pause and unpause the interval as well. So you could toggle the interval through that route. And you could find out if it ha if it is paused as well. So pause will will just automatically pause it. Pause false will start it up again. Pause at not paused, um, the, the interval object dot paused, will toggle it in a sentence. Do you want to see that? And eh, maybe we should just, just in case. Cause it sounds like fun, huh? It sounds like, oh, can you imagine if somebody were speaking to you? I think I've used this. Somebody speaking to me in a speech bubble. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, wait a minute. I got to take a telephone call. Pause. And then you click on the stage and it slows down. It stops so you can read the thing or take a breath. And then you click on the stage again and then it goes or whatever it is, maybe a pause button. So let's try that out and we will say pause and then enter dot paused. So let's have a look at this. I think it has to be not enter dot paused. Enter dot paused will tell us if it's paused or not. We want to pass in. So if it's not paused, if this is not paused, it's running. Not not paused will be true. <laughs> Okay, um, and therefore we were, are saying pause true, so please pause it. If it is already paused, if this is true, then this thing will be false, and pause false will turn it to stop pausing. Oh my goodness. All right, let's try it out and see if it works. So there it is, hello world, and I click, and it seems to be paused on wow hiccup. So I click again, and now it's going again. Oh my goodness. Hello world. Wow, hiccup. Yeah, pause. I clicked. It's not going. Click. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, wow. Oh, okay, super. So uh, there's playing around a little bit with um, intervals and um, timeouts. And we've looked at text. Hopefully that's enough for you with respect to text. Uh, we could randomize the color of it. We can animate the color of the text. I wonder what that would look like. Label dot animate. And in here, we will say props colon color uh, blue. And time. Well, we can keep the time as one. We'll just say loop. Colon true. Should we rewind? I think we should rewind. Rewind. Colon true. Okay. Wow, hiccup. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Hello world. Still work with pausing. Yeah, it didn't it didn't pause the animation, but uh, we could do that too. Um, any animation we can we can pause all animations with animate. Uh, pause. So that would be the same thing here. Well, this maybe we'll do it like uh, animate. Uh, what is it? No, pause animate. Sorry, pause animate. And I believe it would be the same thing as that. 
Okay, let's try it. But this would pause all animations. Hello, world. Oh, see, it stopped the animation at a gray. And there she goes again. Cool, huh? Zim is amazing. Isn't Zim amazing? <laughs> um, that would do all uh, animations. This would do only the animations on the label. Label dot pause animate. And if you had multiple types of animations on label, you could even add an ID to this animate and then pause only that type based on the ID. All right, so that would work as well. Why don't we leave it at that then? It's been a wonderful time talking to you. The one type of, um, there we did both intervals and timeout. The other type of timer we use is called a ticker. And the ticker is uh, runs at the frame rate, runs all the time. Maybe I can just throw in a little bit of ticker as a bonus, ticker, tickler. <laughs> ticker.add run this arrow function. So we use the ticker class directly. There's only one ticker, a master ticker of it all. And it's kind of like the frame rate that everything runs at. Uh, we can change that frame rate with a ticker set FPS or something like that. There's all sorts of uh, nuances with tickers. But anyway, a general thing that we can do with the ticker is we could animate it easily with the label dot x plus plus this will every time the ticker runs will move the x property of the label by one. Oh, goodbye label so that's sort of the how you would animate before you even knew <laughs> about zim animate all right uh, unfortunately uh, off it goes it won't come back we could put a conditional in here to make it come back or something like that but that's one thing that a ticker does a ticker can also help find out if something is hitting. Hey, that's a great idea. Why don't we look at hit tests in the next Zim Basics? And when we look at hit tests, we'll explore a ticker a little bit more. So as a matter of fact, why don't we just delete it right from there so uh, so this thing stays on the page when, when you look at it later. <laughs> okay, I'm Dr. Abstract, and this has been a Zim Basics. If we can get back to it. Hopefully you're having fun with these and uh, remember that in the learn section there's all sorts of uh, more ways to learn in here including a wonderful video series and Zim School. Even kids you can take a look at and a great text guide almost like a textbook here. Mind you Zim School is much like a textbook as well so uh, with a bunch of lessons in them. And then many, many tutorials on some of those Java, JavaScript basics. These tutorials are quite old, but uh, they're still uh, valuable. And then all these Zim bits. We talked about a falling and catching game. That's one of the favorite things that are in Zim bits. Uh, what does it look like? Looks like a little robber. I know how to find it. Well, I can do it. There it is, right there. A little falling catching game. Yay, I'm catching coins, but I don't want to get hit by bombs. Oh, bad bomb. To do that, you have to know about hit tests, and that's what we're looking at next. But we also probably used an interval in here to make that little game going. And in any of these, you can view the code where we've got lots of comments and steps to, to make these types of things. All right, I am Dr. Abstract. Once again, it was great to see you and I'm that little guy there. Uh, come on into zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord or find them down here, right here, slack and discord. Hey, come come tweet with us too. Be lovely if you could follow us and maybe we could try and follow you too. If you make anything with Zim, tweet some stuff, show us. Show us, get social. Woohoo, ciao, have a great day.